I'll show you how to service your, uh, your vehicle and keep it nice and reliable. So the options we're going to be looking at is the uh, contacts and the condenser, the ignition timing, valve clearances and the carburetor settings. So the next item is uh, valve clearances. Now this is critical that it's done correctly as it can cause engine damage. Uh, if it's not done right. One thing you need to do is get number one cylinder on its firing stroke just as you did when we did ignition timing. So when you're when number one is, is firing you can adjust number one cylinder. This is number one cylinder here, this is number two, back left is number three and number four. Before you do anything always mark 180 degrees or the opposite side of number one cylinder with a piece of white as it is at the top dead centre. This will become obvious a little bit later on. But we're on number one, so we'll check and adjust number one valves. This is the exhaust valve, and this is the inlet number one cylinder. Now both valves are set to the same tolerance, which is 6 thou or 0.15 millimetre. So, to check the clearance, insert the feeler gauge just at the top of the valve on each, on each valve and as you can see there they're both too tight because I can't get my feeler gauge in. So what you need to do is release the lock nut with a 13mm spanner and then with a flathead screwdriver into the screw, unwind it slightly as you can see the feeler gauge goes in. Now just adjust it until it just drags. Don't do it too tight. And if you can't get your, your feeler gauge in afterwards, it's too tight again. Now too tight a valve will cause the valve to overheat. As, of, as the valve closes on its seat, it will dissipate all of its heat that it's built up throughout the cylinder head, and then the cooling system will get rid of that heat. If it doesn't close properly, the head of the valve will retain its heat and it will eventually burn out. So once you're happy with the gap that you've got now, uh, making sure that it's, it's not too tight, tighten up the lock nut. Don't do this overly tight, it doesn't really need to be. And then just double check, make sure you haven't moved it. Now once that's done, you can need to repeat that process for cylinders two, three and four. Now this is where the other white mark comes in on your uh, crank pulley. You turn the crankshaft anti-clockwise at half of the turn, 180 degrees, and then you can turn number two. Once you've done that, again, anti-clockwise, another 180, three, and then the same for cylinder four. Now once you've done all your valves, it's imperative that you replace valve cover gasket, as you can see this one's split, it's a cork gasket, sometimes you can buy them and they're, uh, they're rubber. Uh, it is tempting sometimes to use a silicon sealant when refitting this to avoid all leaks, it shouldn't really be necessary, you shouldn't really use uh, silicon on engines, it can cause problems if it gets into the oil strainer. One other thing to note with the rocker cover is to check it for corrosion, sometimes they, they can be so corroded there's actually holes in it and this can cause all leaks. Simply fit your new gasket, place the rocker cover back on, making sure it's seated correctly. So to finish, my name's Neil Oakley from caresofcrobra.co.uk and if you have any questions then please email inquiries at caresofcrobra.co.uk Thank you. Thank you.